Welcome everyone to Trigonometry. We are going to look at a number of VC exam problems and we're going to have great fun doing it. Let's get to it. So, the first one here we're going to do as a warm up activity. So, question number one consider the function f, and we've got an inverse circular function. Okay, and our job is to write down the maximal domain of f. Now, let's see, what can we do with this one? Well, let's relate first to the domain of just normal inverse cos of x function, and it goes from negative 1 to 1. So then, let's take the inside part, the 3x minus 2. Now, that must be in between negative 1 to 1. So what we have to do, of course, add to both sides, and then we're going to divide by 3. And so the implied domain for must be between a third and 1 for x. And that's the domain of our function. So what do you think? For one mark, not too hard? All right, so the next question I'm going to get you guys to work on. Question 2. Let the function of x equals to 2 arctan of 2x plus 1 all over 3, subtract 1. Now, you have to find the maximal domain and range of this function. Hmm, what do you think? Well, let's have a look at it. So, relate it first to the domain of the normal arctangent function, and that is all real numbers. Then, the domain of our function must also be all real numbers, okay? But, let's look at the range of the normal arctan of, of x graph, and that goes from minus pi on 2 to positive pi on 2. So now, let's consider the range of the function must be between 2 lots of negative pi on 2, then subtract 1, and 2 lots of pi on 2, subtract 1. And we get this as a result. Is that what you thought? Let's try question number 3. So the domain and range of the function y equals 2 arc sine of 2x plus 1 minus pi is given respectively. So we're trying to find the domain first and then the range. Okay, so similar as before, first let's relate it to the domain of just a normal arc sine. And that ranges from negative 1 to 1. So the inside part, the 2x plus 1, has to go from negative 1 to 1. And so as we subtract 1 on both sides and then divide by 2, we obtain this for the domain of our function. Now let's consider the range. Now, the range of normal arc sine goes from a minus pi on 2 to a positive pi on 2. So now let's operate on the minimum to maximum y value by multiplying by 2 and then subtracting by pi. And when we simplify, there we have it. So, which one is the correct answer? It must be E. Did you get that? Question number four. Given that cot of 2 theta is equal to root 5 on 20, theta is in between 0 to pi on 4, now find the exact value of cos theta. Cos of theta. Interesting. What do you think we should do? What do you think the value of cos of theta is? Alright, let's try it. So cot of 2 theta first becomes 1 on tan of 2 theta. Where the tan of theta can be thought of as the square root of sec squared of theta minus 1. Okay, now what we can do here is first take the reciprocal of um, 
1 on tan equal to root 5 on 20, so we get 20 on root 5. And let's rationalize that third. And then what we're going to do is square both sides, left hand side and the right hand side. And so then our tan squared is just a sec squared minus 1. And so we're going to replace tan squared with sec squared minus 1. And that will equal to 80. Add 1 on both sides. And then we're going to take the square root on both sides. And we get sec of 2, two theta is equal to 9. Now, we're going to take the positive square root because the angle, look at the size, it's in the first quadrant from 0 to pi on 4. And cos is positive, and so that means sec has to be positive as well. Okay, so then take the reciprocal and we get cos of 2 theta is equal to a ninth. Let's use the double angle formula for cos. And let's use this version of the double angle formula. 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Now I chose that version because I'm after the exact value of cos of theta. And I get a cos of theta from this version of the double angle formula for cos. Add 1 and then divide by 2. There we have it. And then I'm going to take the square root on both sides and simplify. And I get root 5 on 3. Okay. And there we have it. That goes from for the angle 0 to pi on 4. Is that what you thought? Let's try the next question, question 5. The number of times that the graph of y equals 2x, or y equals cos of 2x, intersects with the graph of y equals cosec of x on 4. And we're going to do that over the domain of 0 to 4 pi. How many times are we going to observe an intersection between those graphs? Now, being a multiple choice question, Usually this is from an exam too, and it's okay to use your CAS. So we could do go ahead and do that. Take out your CAS calculator, and let's produce a sketch of our two graphs. Let's see what we get. Okay, so there's your CAS graphs. And as you can see, there is our intersection point right there. Now, make sure you've got your right window from 0 to a 4 pi, just like what the domain says. And you can clearly see one intersection point. So, there's our result. Our answer is B. Question 6. So here we have a inverse circular function graph, and the equation of the graph shown above could be. Hmm. Well, first off, let's relate this to a standard curve of of what um, inverse cos might look like. And also, while we're at it, we should identify the domain, the implied, dom the implied uh, domain, and the range from the graph. So you can see the x values range from 0 to 2a, 0 up to 2a, and the y values range from 0 to pi. Now that might be useful when we're comparing it to the standard graph. Alright, now first off, let's get the, let's um, see what happens when we re, uh, transform our domain to the standard domain of an of a um, inverse circular function. So what I'm going to do is divide both sides by a, and then we've got x on a is between 0 to 2, and then we subtract by 1, and so we can see that now we've got our standard domain of, of inverse circular function from minus 1 to positive 1, and what do we get? 
that produces this, that fits inside this domain, it's an exon A subtract 1. So that's working backwards. That's correct. From minus 1 to 1. Now that fits with this one at the bottom. E. Okay, question 7. So the graph of y equals a plus b times inverse sine of x plus c in the bracket with these endpoints. Now that's shown above here. Now we have to determine the values of a, b, and c um, for this equation, this general equation. Now let's see if we can analyze the graph. First off, the domain of our graph ranges from the minimum x coordinate of negative 3 halves to a maximum of 1 half. Okay, good. And our range goes from negative 3 pi and 4 to 5 pi and 4. Now, here is our standard graph of an inverse sine. Or, so, normal inverse sine that goes from a minus 1 to 1 and a minus pi and 2 to a positive pi and 2 looks like this. So let's see if we can compare what's happening to the two graphs. Well, first off, our standard graph here is reflected. So this minimum here becomes a maximum up here and so on. This maximum becomes a minimum down here. So it's a reflection. So reflection means that the number inside the inverse sine function, the b number, well that has to be a negative. So that cancels out option A, since the b number is positive. Alright, and then what else is happening to the graph? Well the graph is translated to the left, it's shifted all to the left, and as you can see the normal standard graph is centered from the middle, either side of the zero, but now the graph, the center has been shifted over to the left towards negative x direction. So a shift to the left towards the negative x means that the c value inside the bracket here must be positive. Okay? So, so that cancels out option B and option D because the c values are negative. Now let's consider the third situation. We can see that the graph is translated upwards. So from a normal standard graph, it's centered in the middle in the y direction. But in this graph, the center has moved up some units. So a translation vertically up in the positive y direction. So it means that the number, the a number, which is by itself, adding to the inverse sine function, well, that has to be positive as well to translate it vertically upwards. Now, if you look at your two options, option C and option E, well, that C number is both positive, positive a half. So that's not helping us, is it? Any guesses? 50-50? Well, what else could we do to think about this? Let's go ahead and examine the range. Well, the range um, of negative 3 pi and 4 is the minimum value. Well, how is that achieved? Well, think about what's happening to this circular function already. We have a reflection and a, um, a shift, a vertical shift as well. Now, let's see how that could be formed. Well, starting at a pi on 2, then when we reflect it by times by a negative and a negative 2, because that's what the b values are, then that goes negative, and then we add a pi on 4 to get us to this minimum y number. Mm-hmm. Okay. What about the maximum y number? Well, the maximum y number first starts with a negative pi on 2, then we reflect it, with this multiplying by a negative 2, and then we still add this pi on 4. Now this addition of pi on 4 is your a number. 
So A is a pi on 4, and that gives us two the minimum and maximum Y values. So that has to be option E. Yes, what do you think of that one? Okay, question 8. Express cos of 2 times inverse sine of x as a polynomial function of x. Now that's interesting. This is equivalent to a polynomial. Powers of x. Hmm, how does that happen? Well, first off, what do we have? This is a composite function. You've got an inside function and an outside function, the cos. Well, also, consider the inverse sine of x. Well, what is that? That's just an angle theta. So, let's interpret this as cos of 2 theta. So, it's like a double angle, isn't it? So, let's use the double angle rule for cos. And I'm going to use this one the, that involves the sine term because... I want sine of the angle, which is sine of inverse sine, and that's going to cancel out the, the, circ the inverse circular functions. So cos of 2 times inverse sine of x is equal to 1 minus 2 of sine of the inverse sine of x all squared, substituting into the double angle formula. And you can see it simplifies down to this upside down parabola, 1 minus 2x squared. Hmm, now we're going to go ahead and sketch the graph. Now, sketching the graph is a sketch of this upside down parabola, and you think, hey, that might be quite easy. However, what do we know about inverse circular functions, the inside function here? Well, we got to consider the implied domain because this whole thing is a composite function and the domain of a composite function is the domain of the inside function inverse sine and the domain of an inverse sine is an implied domain that ranges from negative 1 to positive 1 so that is also the domain on our composite function cos of 2 inverse sine of x Let's find out what the y-coordinates must be for those values. So when um, there's our rule, 1 minus 2x squared between negative 1 to positive 1. So when x is 1, or negative 1, we get a y-coordinate of negative 1. And when x is positive 1, we get a y-coordinate of also negative 1. So we've got these two endpoints, there and there. And we have to sketch our parabola in between those two endpoints. And it's going to look like this. Another important thing you have to consider is what's happening at these x-axis intercepts when y is equal to 0. So let's work that out. And we get x is positive negative uh, root 2 on 2 as our y-axis, uh, as our x-axis intercepts. Mm -hmm. Did you get something like that? Now, last question. This is a solution to the equation. Cot of 2x minus cot of x is equal to 2. And x has to be between negative pi to positive pi. Alright, so a cot is the reciprocal of tan. So I'm going to take 1 over tan of 2x minus 1 over tan of x is equal to 2. Okay, now this is our double angle formula for tan. So the reciprocal of 1 over tan looks like this. Now, let's look at the denominators. Let's form a common denominator. And the numerator simplifies as so. We've got a negative 1 minus a tan squared of x. And while I'm at it, let's multiply the denominator, 2 tan of x, over to the right-hand side. We get 4 tan of x. Now, bringing all terms to the left-hand side, we can express it like this, and that is a quadratic. So we let u is equal to tan of x, and we form our quadratic equation, u squared plus 4u plus 1 is equal to 0. Let's complete the square to solve for u. 
and we get this expression u is equal to negative 2 plus or minus root 3 and so now what is u? Well let's bring it back to tan tan of x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus root 3 hmm now that's tricky because we can't evaluate that in any exact angle I don't know the inverse tan of a negative 2 plus or minus root 3 Oh dear, we must be stuck. Could there be another way of approaching such a problem? Let's try again. This time, I'm going to think of cot, not as the reciprocal of tan, but I'm going to break it up into cos and sine. So a cot is cos of 2x on sine of 2x. And um, cot of x is cos of x over sine of x is equal to 2. Let's use our double angle formula for sine of 2x. 2 cos of x sine of x in the denominator. Now let's form a common denominator by multiplying the other fraction over here by this 2 times cos of x on the top and the bottom. Let's get a common denominator of 2 cos x sine x. Okay, and our numerator simplifies nicely like so. And here, our cos of 2x on this fraction, I'm going to use a double angle formula, and we end for in terms of the cos version. So it's 2 cos squared x, subtract 1. And you can see the numerators cancel nicely now. And while we're at it, let's multiply the denominator, 2 cos x sine x, over to the right hand side. And we get this expression. Now let's divide by, f by not by 4, however, I'm going to divide only by 2. And I'll end up with a negative a half here on the right. Now that's okay because I like negative a half as an exact value. Let's see what I have next, what left over. So it's a 2 times cos of x times sine of x. 2 times cos of x times sine of x. Have I recognized that before. Well, that's the double angle formula for sine. So we get this. Sine of 2x is now equal to negative a half. Wow, well that's very useful because that I can solve. There we have it. Now we want to evaluate what is the inverse sine of negative a half. We want to do it for values for 2x and that ranges from a negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi and here are all my values I have a negative 5 pi on 6 and negative pi on 6 and then a 7 pi on 6 and 11 pi on 6 divide all angles by 2 and there we have it we've got multiples of pi on 12 as our solutions well done we finally got there so this is an important example that shows you that if you make a choice with a definition of a reciprocal function, for instance, or make a choice with using a particular uh, identity or um, trig fun uh, uh, formula, and we work through it and we get to a situation where we end up with a third for which we have no known values for, then we get stuck and so we hit a dead end and we think hmm, we don't know what to do so start again that's okay try a different uh, formula or expression for the circular function you're looking at in this case a cot is the same as a cos divide a sine instead of 1 over 10 very good well I hope you went well and keep studying.